Hello and welcome to the Greg Theron podcast with your host Greg Theron and today I have the awesome Joe Keys who is a natural chef. Um, me and Joe kind of met up through just kind of Facebook networking and we followed each other for a while so I'm excited to have you on. So Joe, say hello. Hello, thank you so much for having me on Greg. It's great to, to finally see you and, uh, and, and chat properly. Yeah, I think we've all, we've had half a conversation before we started, right? <laughs> So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this is going to be a fun episode. So just tell the listeners what you do and how you arrived at what you do. Okay, cool. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for say, having me on. Um, I am, as I said, Joe Keys, And as you introduced me as a natural chef, um, I retrained as a natural chef after I'd had my three kids. I'm a mum of three. Um, and I previously to that, I was uh, worked in the city um, up in London doing marketing and business development. Um, and then took some time out to have a family and then found a passion. I don't know where it originally came from um, for sort of health and nutrition and fitness. Um, as a child, I was absolutely not into any of all of that. Um, in fact, I was probably the biggest in my peer group um, as a teenager and really struggled with my weight. Um, I suffered from polycystic ovaries um, and it was all it was all a bit of a nightmare in my teenage years. Um, and Grew bigger and bigger and bigger till my sort of early 20s and then I moved to London and realized that uh, um, everyone was into health and fitness and so started really reluctantly getting into it um, and uh, met my husband who was a real gym bunny um, my husband to be it was at the time and so found that I you know that was my motivation at the time but it was never really my thing at all um, and actually the, the sparking moment, the, the change for me came after I'd had all my children um, and all three of them had digestive issues as children, as babies. Oh, wow. Um, I ended up at a nutritional therapist with one of them who really struggled. Um, and she started to make me realize that looking at our diet was really where I needed to start. And that it was kind of that light bulb, bulb moment. So health before to me was all about weight without a shadow of a doubt. It was all about just staying on the scales at the right level and being able to get into whatever clothes I wanted to get into. That was all it was about. And it wasn't until um, literally that meeting with a nutritional therapist to help my daughter with her digestive problems, that I went, oh, actually this is all, uh, you know, what I put in my body really does make a difference to everything, not just how much I weigh and how fat or skinny I am. Um, and I think that was that was the light bulb moment. And I started to looking into it. I thought we were reasonably healthy as a family, but realized very quickly that we really didn't. Um, there was a lot of processed food in there. There was a lot of sugar in there. There was a lot of gluten in there. Um, and so, and just the making a few changes that the nutritional therapist suggested uh, for my daughter, we kind of all did because that was easy. Yep. Um, and it was it was an amazing change. She was on medication, but my daughter came off medication within about three months, probably less than that. You know, changes started before that, but within three months, she was completely off all medication and never had a problem again. Um, but it was also the change that it had on the rest of the family. You yeah. know, the 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 moods, um, especially my younger son, who was really sensitive to sugar. Um, it was it was remarkable and that was really my light bulb moment to to realize um and that's how it all started um and i realized that i had a passion for cooking because i had to get back in the kitchen mm -hmm. um and that then after all the children had gone to school um my last one he's now 10 my youngest is now 10 um i decided to and in fact i was inspired and pushed to do it by my then personal trainer who you remind me of actually quite a lot, uh, Greg, um, <laughs> very similar mentality to you. You know, he had, had thirst for learning and stuff like that. We used to talk endlessly when we should have been training about, you know, nutrition <laughs> and health. And, yeah. and he encouraged me to go and learn more. And, and um, I was planning to train as a full nutritional therapist. Um, but at the time, my father was very poorly and um, I didn't have the, the mental capacity to be able to do that. So did the natural chefs course at the College of Naturopathic Medicine, which is kind of a combination of um, sort of the nutritional background uh, behind food um, and health, um, combined with how to turn that into a decent meal. Um, because I think sometimes there is that that sort of gap for people of knowing 
yeah, I, I kind of understand about the nutrition, but how do I actually cook that and put that on my plate and make that easy for me without it being a really complicated issue? So kind of that's how it all started really, Greg. So a bit of a, a long windy story, but that, that's how I came to be where I am now. And after training, set up my own business. Awesome. So I've got so many questions now. Oh, go on. <laughs> and I'm trying to work out where to start. So I guess the big one is, there, I think there's a real lack of skill on how to cook nowadays. Mm, like my mum taught me, I don't know whether that's just he old Jamaican parenting. You had to learn how to season, how to prepare food. But do you think that's a skill that you're seeing with clients that is lost? Without a shadow of a doubt. Um, I mean, like you say, you know, in the Jamaican community and, and um, a lot of different communities, actually, um, you are taught by your parents. But certainly in, in my generation um, and in my culture, mum was a baker. Um, you know, and we sort of in the 80s, 70s, late 70s, early 80s, you know, the processed food became so convenient and it was all about convenience. Um, and kind of uh, jumped on that bandwagon really and, and that's uh, so I didn't really learn how to cook I mean please don't turn in your grave mum that but you know you were a baker not a cook um, and uh, you know there were certain things that would come out on the table every every um, every week and we got stuck you, you know you get stuck in that rut. but processed food really kind of took over um, and and we weren't taught that um, as maybe you were. Um, so definitely most of my clients, and it's the comfort, they do know how to do it. Um, and they do have, cause it's not rocket science, but people think it is. Yeah. Um, and it's that it's giving people confidence in the kitchen and really just giving them the, um, so part of my business, one of the, the things that I do is, is run workshops called simple meals for better health. Um, and it's called that because literally it is, it couldn't be simpler, um, but they are really tasty, uh, delicious meals that are quick to either prepare in advance, which a lot of people need to be able to do. So it's just there or grab it out of the freezer or, you know, they're things that you really can turn around in 15, 20 minutes. Mm. Um, and it's just giving people those types of recipes that because you, so many people say, oh, I open a recipe book and there's so many ingredients and it's too complicated but if you can show them and get them to do that you know one of the great things about um having been locked down and having to have moved everything on zoom is to be able to do these zoom cook-alongs where they which you know we never cooked along before it was always a demonstration kind of thing they demonstrated and they ate it um but now we can have a situation where they're cooking and and then they so once they've done it they go, God, that's so easy. I will do that again and again and again. Um, so it is giving people the, you know, the simple basic skills and more importantly, the confidence to just give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> um, I'm blaming MasterChef and all these programs, right? Because I think people see these programs and are like, oh, I need to be a Michelin star chef to be able to eat healthy. Yeah. And it couldn't be further from the truth, right? absolutely so far from the truth um and and I, I think actually also the way that they edit some of those programs make it, it look a lot more difficult and a lot more fancy than actually those processes are um mm. you know blenders you know if you haven't got a blender get a blender um because that's one of my one of my favorite pieces of equipment i i blend up sauce you know i mean the Indian community and some of my Indian friends will turn in their grave as well, uh, you know, hearing me say this, but you know, it, it, the way that they traditionally cook, you don't have to do it like that. If that's not what you know, and that's not your skill, you can still get those same flavors from just blending it, blending those things together or some of those things together in a Nutribullet and you've got a fantastic curry sauce that yeah. everyone in the family will like or a chili sauce or a, uh, you know, so it, it's those, it's not, you, you don't have to follow the rule book. You can still make delicious, quick and easy, healthy meals. Yeah, without lots of um, ingredients. You don't need a, a recipe book that's this big. No, you really don't. You really don't. So yeah. something you mentioned earlier was then just about, the, the, you know, your daughter wasn't very well. 
etc and that's when you realized that health wasn't just body fat and scales right uh-huh so what's your kind of overall view on what health should be now um well i really wish that everybody um that scales were thrown in the bin for 99 percent of the population because i think that really causes a lot of especially women um but probably also a lot of men secretly um a lot of anxiety around around their their body image and their body weight and and how they uh, perceive health um but for me health is is that full package of um what you put in your body because that affects everything yep. um and is the foundation to everything um be it your mood your energy your ability to fight disease you know the list just goes on and on and on um that by the way this is just me doing <laughs> five because i'm like yes preach <laughs> and, and, but it is it is um and then but on from that, you know, it's it's kind of those those healthy, what I call um, healthy lifestyle habits. So you've got to move, whatever that means for you, in in whatever uh, ability you have or whatever goal you want to achieve. Sleep is up there with nearly as most as important as what you put in your body, mm -hmm. um, and uh, self care. You know, looking after yourself and being kind to yourself and I mean, this is part of what you put in your body, but staying hydrated, drinking enough water and getting enough liquid in because your body can't function properly without that. Um, and I don't think many of us drink enough water um, and liquid. So that, you know, and, and it, it is that, that whole package. Um, and, and that sounds really unachievable to many people mm. uh, because it's so many things. Uh, and what I try and teach is that you, what you've got to understand is that there is there is no quick fix. I, I'm going to be honest. You know, you you can't go on a six week plan and have achieved good health at the end of it wherever you started because you know health is a journey. It's a path and it's ever changing. Even you know even for me, I, I'm, I'm never there. I'm never going to be there because my body's always changing. Life is always changing. Uh, what I need is always changing. Um, mm -hmm you know especially for, for women with the hormones that you know a lot of my clients are of that age where they're heading towards or in menopause perimenopausal and stuff you know so so they need to what used to work for them 10 years ago doesn't work anymore well why, why not what they don't understand why it's because you're not the same anymore your body's not the same anymore what you do is not the same anymore so you have to kind of really learn to listen to your own body and um and trust it and, and adapt to it um uh, as you know as you're changing and what was uh, sorry i've gone off on a little tangent no, no, no. <laughs> tangent away tangent away <laughs> but it, it it is that that learning there is no there is no quick fix and it is a journey um and you have to take one small step at a time and and be honest with yourself about what you want to focus on for the next four weeks or six weeks um and just start building small habits around each of those areas be it you know sleep make a commitment to yourself and start building a habit of what your sleep should be um you know and and you know everybody's different some people are night owls some people aren't you know some people are that i i go to bed very very early i get up very very early um other people in my household are completely the opposite but you have to work around that you know it's um and work with what you what works for you and your lifestyle as well i'd argue though that some of that is learned habits right because i feel like we've got this actually no i'm going to blame my parents sorry mum and dad no so I, yeah they they're responsible for a lot <laughs> yeah, well I, I think what happened was when we were younger and you were told to go to bed, it was almost seen as a punishment. So you'd end up staying up later and then you, I'm a teenager, now I can stay up later. <laughs> and then you just, go the, you just go totally the opposite way. Is that, so is that your kind of thought as well? Yeah, I'm, I mean, you're, the way you have been brought up and your, your learned behavior is massive, mm -hmm. absolutely massive. 
um, I mean, so yours is the, the going to bed maybe, mine is the clean plate. Uh, clean plate brigade, I was brought up, you, you clean your plate. You do not, you, you don't get pudding, because we're a pudding family, you don't get pudding until your plate is clean. Yep. And, and, and I still do that. I, 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 I cannot, however hard I try, sustain, leave, I go through a phase where I'm going to leave something on my plate because I'm going to break this habit. I've tried it many times. It still doesn't work. So I've had to work around that. That is an ingrained habit I, I've given up trying to break. So now I use a smaller plate and I make sure I put less on my plate to start with and or I like to have my plate filled. So I fill it with a salad before I put anything else on it, you know, and then, so I've had to retrain myself to, to, to work with that habit. But so, you know, I, I mean, the other course that I, I run is, is called Menu and Mind, um, which brings all kind of these things together. Um, I've teamed up with, a, I, I'm no mind expert, so I've teamed up with a, a friend of mine who we've, we've been friends for over 10 years, but she's trained as a, an NLP practitioner, so Neuro Linguistic Programming. Um, and we work with people to, to try and get them to, to realize, you know, some of these learned behaviors and listen to how they talk to themselves and become, you know, there's kind of five areas we look at sort of first thing, which I mentioned earlier on it, to you before we were, we were, we came on recording, but sort of their, their core values is really understanding what, what your core values are and where they've come from and how they impact on what goals you're trying to set yourself and what you're trying to achieve. Um, and, and then it's sort of, sort of setting those goals and making sure they're realistic, but also um, looking at becoming aware. That is the first thing to changing your habits. You can't change a habit unless you're aware of what you're doing. Yep. Um, you know, and, and understanding where those peeling back some of the onion layers of of why you've got those habits and and are they changeable or yeah. are they not changeable? And if they're not changeable, how are you going to adapt to to work around that? If you need to change, uh, you know, if it's not fitting in in line with your goals or your um, or what you're trying to achieve, really, you know, and then sort of the mental flexibility that you need to change habits and the biggest one. I think for a lot of people is is responsibility and it's are you taking responsibility for what you're trying to achieve uh, I'm, I'm loving all the high-fiving going on there Greg. <laughs> <laughs> listen uh, sorry I hope it doesn't distract you too much when I hear stuff that I know that people really need to absorb yeah. and the hundred percent responsibility I've been banging on to my clients about this lately yeah. like, literally everything you do you're responsible for so I, I love that Sorry, carry on, carry on. That's high five and I distracted you. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is, it's that, um, it is taking responsibility and getting people to become aware of the excuses that they use to not take responsibility. So I haven't got time. I've got fussy eaters in the house. Uh, you, you know, my husband works. We can't eat at that time. There is, I mean, hundreds of excuses that people will use that they think are excuses. It's just them not taking responsibility for what they're trying to achieve and what they want to do. Um, and that's hard, you know, and we all do it. Um, but it's becoming aware of doing it. And once you're aware that, of what you're doing and, and how, what you're telling yourself and how you're talking to yourself, it's then you can start to make progress. and, and uh, they are your choices, like you say, um, and people need to to take responsibility for them before they can move on. Do you know so there was something beautiful you, you were saying though about people's core values, and we were talking about this just before we we came on. And for me, when clients come to work with me, that's the first thing I want to attack. I don't, I'm not worried about protein, calories, micro. I'm not even worried about that. I want to know what's going on in here. Yes. <laughs> So as part of your program, you, do you really push that element of it? Um, uh, we do. We, we make it uh, an important part of it. But we don't push people to, um, and we certainly don't sell that that's what we do. Yeah, because cool. it, it, it scares people a little mm. bit, I think. Um, this whole sort of mindset, sort of, there's still such a, I mean, it's not counselling in any way, shape or form. It's just learning to understand who you are mm. um 
you know, and, and I think you, certainly for me, um, you know, you get lost along the way somewhere, I think, with, um, f for me, it was, you know, you get on the rat race, you, you, you jump into work um, and you follow what everybody else is doing. It's all about how much money you can earn. It's all about how hard you work, how many qualifications you've got. And you, you do, you do, you do, you do. You know, and I, I, I didn't do a degree. I didn't, uh, I, in fact, I quit my A-levels halfway through them. And I wasn't from that same mould, but I went to London and I did. You I rebel, you. Rebel you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, I, um, but then I did, you know, uh, when I was working up in London, a, a law firm in marketing, I, I felt I had to do the marketing qualifications and all that. So I did all that. Um, and um, just just followed what I was supposed to do or what I felt I was supposed to do at the time. And then um, it's, you know, get married, have children, and you kind of lose who you are along the way a little bit. And um, it's not until the, the kids are a little bit older and you've got a bit more headspace um, that you can kind of try to reconnect with who you are and what you want, as opposed to sort of giving and, and doing what other people expect of you a, a lot of the time, um, I think. Um, and, and again, that's, you know, like born out of, of habits that you, you're taught or, or you're brought up with, I think. And, and sometimes breaking those and, and learning what your core values are again, that are yours, not ones that you've been told that you are. Um, so, you know, so that, that's another one for me is that I'm a middle child. Um, and uh, I wouldn't say I've got middle child syndrome because my sister's sort of 10 years younger than me, but uh, my brother was always good at everything. You know, he, uh, without, he just, that, like the tiniest bit of effort, you know, be it sports, be it, you know, uh, uh, education, you know, whatever he did, whatever he set his mind to, he was brilliant at. Me, I had to work so hard to even just meet average at anything I did. And so, you know, those were the things that I was, I kind of got brought up with and I felt, but actually now I'm like, what, what was all that about? That, that's not, that was just me using an excuse, probably, um, to, to not, uh, and telling myself I wasn't good enough. I, I've gone through my life, you know, till sort of, I was sort of late 40s or well I'm late 40s now but sort of early 40s you know telling myself I wasn't good enough so I couldn't do it but I've learned now that that's not true and, I, and I've you know come into my own sort of later in life I would say. <laughs> you know what you just reminded me of one of the things I always hear a lot is oh, I've got a skinny friend and they eat so much but they can't well, I can't they they lose weight like that but if I just look at a pizza I put on weight. Yeah. And I'm like, but you, do you follow them around every day? Like, do you <laughs> live with them? <laughs> so, what are your what what mis, big misconceptions about nutrition do you see the most? Um, I think people still people are still uh, think that to be um, well. First of all, you know, around health and nutrition is, is still this, it's all about weight thing. Um, and people, are, you know, are, that's a big bugbear of mine. You know, you can have, you can be, you can eat, you could eat lots and lots of healthy food, but you could still be on the larger side and, and uh, overweight if you were an excessive amount of it. Hmm. It is quite hard to eat an excessive amount of oh, healthy yeah. food because of the way it works in your body it's it's easier to eat an excessive amount of junk food because your body doesn't process it in the same way um and it's you know your body's still craving the nutrients that you're not giving it from eating junk food as it were um so yeah so one of my biggest bugbears is is you know people's correlation between weight and health um i think if you start to really change and eat healthy unprocessed food and give your body the nutrients that it needs it will find its own equilibrium of health and weight that may not be the perception of the weight that you think you should be for example you know when i was at my skinniest um, i probably wasn't my healthiest um, at all yeah. um, you know, I, I've gone from being, you know, sort of 11 stone or plus probably um, down to seven and a half, uh -uh, not healthy in any of those. But, you know, finding 
and taking the time to let your body find its own equilibrium of health um, and weight and accepting that that's what it should be mm -hmm. is, is true health, in my opinion. Yeah, that's awesome. Are there, are there any other big myths that, that you see that um, just make you just want to go, ah! Don't eat fat. That is a big myth. I mean, please eat good fat. Lots of it um, would be, you know, I think there are a lot of people out there who still think um, that they, they are not going to be, can't be healthy if they eat fat. Um, there are certain fats you should avoid, in my opinion, um, but there are lots that you should eat. So let's, let's wolf down those avocados and uh, olive oils and uh, coconut oil within reason um yeah yeah uh, it, it's good healthy fats from fish and good quality meat um in my opinion is makes a, a good healthy round rounded balanced diet you know not everyone eats you know i i i'm a plant-based chef but i am not a vegetarian and i'm not a vegan um i love my fish and i love my meat but i eat it in moderation um, I'm a plant-based chef generally because I think that's where people struggle to to become creative and know what to do with it except boiling it and putting it on the side of your plate yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. which is where people struggle to eat lots of vegetables because that, well, you know, like, you eating know. eating lots like that is probably not the most uh, inspiring thing to do um, yeah. So yeah, so um, stabilizing your blood sugars would be the one thing that I would encourage people to focus on um, and doing that by having a balanced plate, um, eating um, low glycemic carbohydrates, not being scared of eating carbohydrates either, um, eating good healthy fats um, and staying away as far as you can from, unproce from processed foods. So eating unprocessed foods. Yeah, I think there's, um, I think you're right about vegetables in general i think again it comes back down to childhood vegetables was vegetables was kind of plopped on your plate i was like oh, yeah that looks like fun not <laughs> exactly and, and usually probably over boiled and probably got not many nutrients left in them anyway <laughs> yeah exactly you get this green water don't you you're like oh. yes green water no you've just poured all the nutrients down the sink yeah drink that water and probably leave the vegetables <laughs> <laughs> so what what's the probably the biggest tip you would give someone who is completely lost doesn't know what where to start is confused by the low carb keto no high fat no paleo track oh, calories, slimming world weight watchers yeah uh, lean lean in 30 days whatever whatever what, what what do you say to those people where do you start them where do i start them um i say stop looking at all those plans stop looking at all those uh you know faddy diets um stop looking at trying to follow something that somebody else is telling you to do you've got to um be realistic with where you are to start with um and really evaluate what you're if we're talking about food particularly evaluate what you're eating at the moment and 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 do a food diary, do an honest food diary. Because if you ask someone to do a food diary, they, well, one, they start suddenly eating a lot of healthy food that they would never have eaten before. And two, if they don't do that, <laughs> they don't actually write down everything that they've eaten. They only write down the good bits. So just do it for yourself, write an honest food diary. Yep. And then for at least seven days and start to look at, where you think you could make small changes. So the things you want to be focusing on first, as I mentioned earlier on, is, is, is hydration. First of all, start drinking lots more water. Um, secondly, look at um, how many coloured vegetables you're eating um, and fruit, obviously, um, but particularly the vegetables. Could you add in some more? Could you find some more variety? Um, look at so this kind of goes towards you know how you build your plate yeah. um so that's how i would get people to really focus on um on looking at how they can change their food diary is how they build their plate so look at your plate as you build it um for, for dinner for example um don't don't think think 
become aware of how you think about what you put on your plate. So if you think about what you're having for dinner, do you say, oh, I'm going to have um, fish and the side of this, this and this? Think about it the other way around. So first of all, the first thing you put on your plate is uh, raw uh, leafy greens or, uh, you know, some kind of salady type thing. Fill up your plate as much as you like with that, you know, and then think about um, what quality protein you're going to put on there. Um, and then wh where is the fat going to come from? So if you've got a fatty fish, an oily fish, or you're going to put some avocado, or you're going to have an oil, oily dressing or sauce. Um, so, so, that, so thinking about how you build your plate, just to really start to trigger some things. And it's amazing how quickly people suddenly go, oh yeah, oh well, that, well that's easy, well I'll just swap that for that. And it is about small swaps. Mm -hmm. And that's you know, one of the things we, that we give um, our, our people on the menu of my course that we do is that they get these lists of swaps. So um, if, if you're starting from a point of, you know, what you have for breakfast is, you know, a bowl of Cheerios, a piece of white toast and a, um, and a glass of orange juice. You know, what could we change? You know, and you take them across better, even better, really great. You know, so just making those very, and people start, they find out where they are on the chart and they go, OK, so all I've got to do is swap that orange juice for, um, for water or a green smoothie. That's the first thing I've got to do. OK, next week I'm going to change the Cheerios to oats. Or, you know, it's, it's the, those small swaps, small swaps. Awesome. And yeah, you see, every time you speak, you just make me <laughs> so many things and I'm like, Sorry, yeah, I go off on a wormhole, don't I? Well, no, no, not at all. No, I, I love these these discussions because I think people need to hear how we think and yeah, what really needs to happen. So, something we talked about just before you know we recorded again was people do need to understand though that their goals mm -hmm. that they think they have or think that they want don't necessarily align with the person and the values that they are absolutely because I, I i often get people to go oh, greg i want to get really super lean and i'm looking at a situation going okay well actually you're probably 20 30 40 pounds away from being healthier yeah. to get lean is a total mind shift you have to do certain things so you were talking in about people earlier before we jumped on just can we recover that bit because i think that's something people need to hear yeah it is um so so people will, will come and uh and have a goal like you say that they, they want to be they have this image in their head of what they want to be um and they've been striving for this for years you know and they've yo-yo dieted and they've just got worse um because you know they feel that they failed um and they talk to themselves in a way of you know if they don't achieve, you know, if they're looking at going back to these scales again, you know, they jump on the scales and if it's one pound up, you know, overnight that, you know, the whole world's going to fall apart and they're going to eat salad for the next three days so that, you know, they can get that one pound off. Um, but what, you know, so what we do is we take them back and ask them to look at their core values and what those mean to them. Um, and, you know, one of the examples is, you know, that if their core values, um, is around uh, food, for example, if socializing and uh, family time is all around food and eating together and eating the same things, um, then trying to change their diet to something that stops them being able to do that or socializing, you know, is all around food and going out, um, you know, and they eat out three times a week because that's what their, that, that's one of their, core values is, is family time and socializing around food um, and that makes them feel safe and comfortable and you know uh and loved and things like that mm -hmm. you know all those things are all mixed up in them trying to to change fundamentals within the way that they eat and how they eat um and, and they just don't align um and that's why they've always struggled and they've gone on and off and on and off because they can't pull themselves away from that core value and, and and you shouldn't you know that is your core value um of of being you know being with the family and, and it just brings that 
you know that social element to it and and the you know the love and the care and and all that that's all wound up in all that um and, and you can't move people away from that you can't detach that so you have to learn to work around it and how so but uh, and so going out is a treat you know so um, and because going out is a treat then we have to have three courses um and we have to indulge in all the stuff that we wouldn't eat at at home mm. well no you don't so you can still go out and you can still socialize and you can still enjoy that that time with your family or, or friends or whatever it is if you know and, and eat with them but just change what you're eating you don't it's changing that mentality that going out is a treat which when we were you know when i was a kid it was a treat we went went out for, to a restaurant once in a blue moon yeah. so you did you treated yourself and you had the knickerbocker glory for pudding yeah. every time you went out and you yeah. had deep fried camembert to start with and chips and whatever because that was once in a blue moon mm. now people well before lockdown anyway um yeah. people go out and eat two or three times a week yeah four times a week plus two takeaways exactly exactly takeaway gosh what's that um <laughs> <laughs> and uh you, you know and if you follow your 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 sort of inbuilt habit or core value as it were to to have this comfort around you know socializing and it being a treat and all that if you're only doing it once a month that's fine but if you end up doing it two or three times a week you really need to change what you're choosing yes. um and and one of the tricks and, and tips I, I tell people is to uh don't go to the restaurant until you've chosen what you're going to eat don't leave yeah you can, you can choose what you're having before you go you download their menu or you call them up and ask them to send it to you if they haven't got it up to date online and you choose before you go when you're in a, a, a you know a safe space where you're not being pressurized to make a decision you haven't had a couple of drinks and you can make a good decision before and when you get to the restaurant don't even look at the menu and again that comes down to accepting that 100 percent responsibility absolutely yeah absolutely it's, it's, it's funny, you know, just listening to you talk and obviously I hear a lot of ladies go, oh, well, I'm going to go to the gym five times a week. I'm going to train for an hour, Greg. I want that body. And I'm like, but you're, from what I've seen of your whole life, and what you told me, it doesn't quite match. So actually what you're saying is that sometimes this, this goal isn't the real goal. The other goal is something else. Yeah, absolutely. And we get that all the time. Um, people come on the course and they think they're coming for, well, mostly weight loss. Um, and you start and you go, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And we start, you know, week one, we do core values. Week two, we do goal setting. Week three, we do taking responsibility. And oh, so no, it's not, it's not about weight loss at all, is it really? It's about getting organized, setting boundaries, um, you know, and, and it, and it's, not necessarily about what they look like at all it's about everything else that's going on in their life <laughs> and then by that happening by doing all of these things all of a sudden their body starts to change absolutely <laughs> and they're like oh and yeah yes exactly and uh, and they they didn't realize that actually if they just wrote a diary or a journal or um got organized in in that area of life that that area of life just falls into place <laughs> um so it's it it is it is a path it is a journey it's going to be ever changing and until you can accept that there is no one size fits all um that it's no quick fix um and that you have to take responsibility for what you want to achieve and how you're going to achieve it there is loads of really really good people you included greg around to support you and take you through that journey but it is your responsibility and you almost certainly have all the resources that you need um, we can give you extra skills we can give you extra expertise and guidance um, but you've got it all you you know it's all within you um, and you can do it really is 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 what you need you know what all the clients need to learn um yeah perfect that's a perfect way to just bring it together, bring it together. <laughs> that that was that was beautiful so 
where can people find you and just tell me a little bit about more about your mind and menu course yeah thank you um so so my business is called time to nourish and within time to nourish i kind of do two two things i've got my one-off workshops which are called simple meals for better health which really is sort of a, a nutritional cooking workshop um, but the other side uh, which uh, I'm incredibly passionate about is the my sort of longer term menu and mind uh, which are where I say I team, teamed up with my NLP practitioner friend um, and that's a, a five-week course uh, which now is all online um, and expo is starting on the 6th of January and we do have a couple of spaces left we keep the groups really small so it can be quite um, intimate and uh, sort of personalized um, and then we have a, a membership group um, for anyone who's been on the course we have a membership group of thriving all ladies actually at the moment but we're not we're not against having a, a, a men <laughs> join us yep um, and so you can find me at uh, so find out about menu and mind at www.menuandmind.co.uk and that's and a n d mm -hmm. um, but my main uh, business website is uh, time to nourish.co.uk <laughs> yeah awesome blah, blah, blah. too many words so whether it's .com now is it what is it yeah .com <laughs> oh it's right we'll find it i'll make sure it's in the show oh, you'll find it um yeah and i'm on instagram and, and uh facebook as well so yeah lots of and recipes LinkedIn. on my website and linkedin as well and linkedin yeah i'm, a, I'm not so good at linkedin i'm trying to get back into it <laughs> don't worry I'm, I'm the same i'm like oh i've really got a post on linkedin today i know there's so many platforms isn't there um Wait. but yeah i just i just love sharing my knowledge and um it, it's it's really about the passion for sort of in sparring and empowering people back to health um, and for me it's through food and being able to just really encourage people that they've got everything that they need um, and they can do it once they you know take responsibility and and it's 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 not a quick fix no hell no awesome no. so my final question yeah your top four tips that people can take away from this show so they can go oh yeah joe said that what would they be Wow. Um, oh gosh, this, just four. <laughs> just four. <laughs> um, yeah. So I suppose um, it would be to to build um, to build healthy habits, really, and and those healthy habits need to be around uh, what you eat, and that needs to include lots of greens. Mm -hmm. have a green smoothie every day if you want a top tip on the food side of things yes. have a green smoothie every day um sleep get some good sleep make sure you're getting enough sleep mm -hmm. quality sleep move obviously get whatever exercise you can um it doesn't have to be hit workouts it can be walking it can be yoga it can do something though don't sit on the sofa and go i can't be bothered just go outside get some fresh air and, and do something yeah. and be kind to yourself listen to what you say to yourself uh you know that inner chimp there mm -hmm. listen listen and become aware of what you say to yourself and start talking to yourself kindly so those are my four top tips awesome <laughs> I know, and I know that you could do about 50 million more. We could yeah, I, I could do I could do five on each one of those. <laughs> I, I know you could. Don't worry. Maybe but no, it, it, it is. It, but it's just, you know, it, it's the whole package. Yeah. Um, and and you've got to make healthy habits in those four areas. Um, you know, and if you need help in any of those areas, Greg is very good at giving you top tips. And yourself. And they can come <laughs> and see you. Definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And to anyone, then go and stalk Joe on all of the platforms on the website. Um, you'll get some amazing information. And thank you for coming on. No, oh, thanks for having me, Greg. It's been great. I knew we would uh, just talk and talk and talk. We could probably go on for another two hours. <laughs> well, well, what, do you know what? I'm I, I'm more than open to having you back on. Uh, you know, later date. Yeah, we it would be good to have um, uh, Anya, the NLP practitioner, on as well, and she oh. can. Really take you down that hole of um, the mind side of stuff. Oh, do you know what? Because I love that stuff. <laughs> I, I really geek out on that stuff. Like, forget training and nutrition. I'm like, I want to know about the head stuff. So yeah, yeah. I, the, well, the next one we do, we'll do about head stuff and training because I'd love to hear you talking about training as well. Right, so. Oh, this is going to be have fun. a fabulous Christmas.
Awesome. Yeah, we'll do. You too. And anyone listening, just make sure you subscribe. Give us a, a five-star rating on Apple and, and share this with the world. Talk yeah. to you. Thanks, Bye. Greg. Bye.